Kickstarter or YouTube, we're backing in today for more of our Gen Con Bonanza Explosion broad coverage. Brought to you by our amazing Kickstarter backers who send us year after year. Thank you all so much. And our amazing sponsors, like Medieval Lords, who has Black Souls coming to Kickstarter a little bit later this year. Bleem Games, who's going to be redoing Dark Mages later this year. And Tasty Minstrel Games, who sponsors everything we do. So show them some love on those links down below. Right now, though, I'm very excited. One of my favorite designers of all time is Stefan Feld. And we're here with Travis from Queen Games. And we're going to learn about the new Feld, Merlin. Hey, Travis, what is Merlin? Well, Merlin, first, I just want to, everybody, we all, we, we all get caught up in talking how great a Feld game. It's also a Michael Rennick game. It's okay. co-designed. And Michael Rennick did Cuba and Pillars of the Earth oh, and lots nice. of other big games. So he's a big designer, too. Of course, Feld is, yeah, I'm with you. I mean, Feld's a great, so... Um, but let's talk about Merlin. So yeah. Merlin is, uh, we're all knights, King Arthur's knights, right? And we're on the round table, and the round table in this game is the rondelle in the middle of the table with lots of action stuff that, uh, that the knights can do as they move around the table. So um, each player has a player board, which we've got over here. This is the blue player board. On the blue player board, we collect resources here. We collect apples here. These are our influence markers. These are our henchmen that we put out into the different castles across the land. This is our action pool. We have three dice for our own knights, and we have one die that we can use to move Merlin around. And then up here, we have some traitors that show up. We have to fight them off every round. And these shields are what we use to fight the traitors. Finally, we've got these staffs over here. These are Merlins, and they let him do some special things. So that's where we collect all the stuff. And we get all that stuff by doing things on the rondelle. So at the beginning of the turn, you're going to roll all of these dice. They'll come up over here in the pool, and they're going to look something like that. So this means that I can move my blue knight two, four, or five spaces clockwise. All right? Or I could move Merlin clockwise or counterclockwise. Whatever space they land on, that's the action they're going to take. And we've got all kinds of actions out here, like <clears throat> build a castle in the countryside. Over here, when we build castles in the countryside, if you build on a castle, you get one of the resources listed. And at the end of the turn, you can imagine with this Feld game, it's going to score points. So we're going to score majority, whoever has the most, and this is going to score five, and then this one's going to score three, and that one's going to score two. And that'll score three times throughout the game. At the end of every other round, we score. All right, so that was build the castle. And then this one says turn a resource into a resource. And this one says once you get these guys out, they go on these tents. And this one lets you move it to an adjacent. And every time you move these guys around, they have little icons on them that say place an influence in that castle. Take a flag from that castle. Take a shield from that castle. Take a resource from that castle. Um, the other actions out here are... This one says, if you have influence in a castle, take a resource from there. This one says, um, the ones that have a point at the bottom, as you can imagine, more scoring. Score point salad, right? So everywhere, every influence marker you have in the board, you score a point. Every flag you have in the board, you score a point. Um, also scoring throughout the rounds, we have these. You have a set of cards in your hand. They all have criteria on them. At the end of any action, when you can meet those criteria, which just means you have those, you don't lose them, you have them, you can say, I've got those two things, I'm scoring two points. It's going to draw another card, so you can score one of those at the end of every action. Um, <clears throat> at the end of every other round, again, we're going to score. First thing we do during the scoring round is we're going to fight off these traitors. If you have a shield that matches the traitor, you can fight him off. If not, the Black Knight... Uh, uh, the black flag will let you take out one whole set of traders. So, like this guy could kill two with one flag. If you don't kill them, they cost you three points. If you kill them all, you don't earn anything unless you are the current owner of Excalibur, and then which you would earn three points for killing all the traders. So after we do that, then we would uh, come down and score. We would first score the knights over here. Then we score our influence. We have influence in the castles. Whoever has the most influence scores, and they score one point for every influence marker there. So if you had two and I had three, I'd score five. Okay. Then we would score our hen uh, hen uh, henchman out here. For every henchman on the board, you score a point. All right? Then we would reset for the next two rounds. We get some new henchmen, or new trader knights we have to deal with. We do that three times. A um, couple things. When Merlin moves, if he lands on, say, here, which is the one point for every influence marker, 
and you want to and you're scoring a big number like say seven or eight points this will let you double any Merlin action you can use it three times so you can say I'm gonna double that action and score twice um, and these flags we talked about this one this one lets you um, com uh, complete two of these cards at the same time and if you successfully do that you get two bonus points all the rest of them mitigate the luck on the dice uh, go counterclockwise with that time change the face of a die take someone else's action so blue could take the action of red or green or yellow that they're standing on wherever you land go straight across and take that action so those let you mitigate the luck a little bit so you're not just all random um, and then the final thing I haven't touched on are these apples and you start the game with an apple and the apple lets you change the face of a die when you really need to and you get a new apple every time you claim the grail you pick it up and you've got it and uh, you found the holy grail and it had an apple in it and uh, this is coming out later this year or is it's it coming out next be year? out at Essen and it's going to be on Kickstarter all right fantastic so that is Merlin from Queen Games looks like pass to victory upon pass to victory upon pass to victory which I personally love looks like it might be a cup of tea be sure to check that one out if you're enjoying this Gen Con coverage please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know you like hats you're a hat man I do I wear a UK basketball hat all the time it Nice. Me personally, no. I have a very, very large head. I have to custom custom order hats. It's terrible. I love the idea of hats. You have a big brain. Uh, yeah, too bad it's only like 3% you use. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Are you a hat person as always? Thanks for your time, you two.